Today, we have the uh, distinct pleasure and honor of having um, a longtime Guidepost contributor and editor, uh, Rick Hamlin, uh, here to talk to us about Advent, everything we would need to know about Advent. Um, and, you know, Rick, I, this time of year, you know, what you see so much is the count, the shopping days to Christmas being counted down. But long before there were shopping days to Christmas, there was Advent, and, and people seem, that seems to have gotten a little buried in the commercial madness that has become Christmas. The, you know, Advent is a wonderful way to celebrate the coming of Christmas. Yeah, you know what, I, I've always thought that the word Advent meant waiting, because as a kid, we're waiting for Christmas. But the roots of the word are coming, vent, advent. It's, so it's, it's the coming of Christ. Uh, and interestingly enough, not just his coming at Christmas, but there's this also hidden meaning of, or not so hidden, of the second coming, because he's going to come back mm -hmm. sometime. Mm -hmm. So it really has that dual meaning, and I never really thought about it that way. And it's interesting that it's not this as you say, this passive act of waiting, but it's the active act of, of, of actually greeting and, and bringing uh, the Savior into our lives. Yeah, and you know, um, it used to drive me nuts that, you know, the once you, you know, even before the turkey was, you know, out of, uh, out of the oven, Christmas carols would be start blasting, you know, uh, are also the Christmas music and the Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go up almost, you know, after Halloween. Uh, but if we can take our position as people of faith and look at those as, ah, this is a reminder, Christ is coming. Good, good. I, and I think that's the message that has gotten you know, subsumed by the larger celebration of Christmas, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we lose the the essential message of so so. Do you know anything more about the historical roots of Advent? Has it always been the number of days it is now? How did early Christians observe it? It's interesting when you say Edward of you know how many days. It actually changes each year because the 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 ce the celebration starts on the first of four Sundays before Christmas. And mm -hmm. since Christmas this year is on a Sunday, that means Advent starts actually on November 27th. You know, so that it's a bit of a moving target. So we, we start celebrating on the first of four Sundays before Christmas. Ah, that's amazing. So it's a, sort of an elongated... Um... Uh, a celebration and I, I, really it is a kind of ongoing celebration you know rather than you know one day of of mad eating and gift giving um you know the the analog to it is lent right uh yeah and interestingly time. enough it's it's you know lent is a a penitential season right. and advent historically has been also a, a, a penitential i mean you know what really? people would give up something for Advent, the way we give up something for Lent. Um, you know, the, uh, but I think it's, you know, not only just you can take on and you take on these little things, the little ways of celebrating. Gosh, when I was a kid, we had an Advent calendar and each day we would open one of the windows and there would be a little picture, but there would also be a Bible verse to, to, to read. And, you know, as kids, we just love that. I mean, that was much better than waiting for mm -hmm. Santa to come down the chimney. And you can guess what that last window was. There was Mary and yeah. Joseph and Jesus in the manger. All right. So do people still have Advent calendars? I know uh, we, we publish an Advent calendar. Oh, yeah, of course, you know, and I think it's best to have ones where you get to open the window. window? Okay. Yeah. Do, um, do, do you still make an advent calendar? We have an advent calendar that we use. But the other one, speaking of windows, is we put candles in the window. We've got these electric candles. I'm sorry, they're not, you know, lit, but it's easier that way. You have well, you an electric. Christmas tree. <laughs> Never. But these electric candles 
and they we light them first at, at Advent. And you know we see lots of decorations in 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 people's homes for Christmas, but this is one way because it's interesting. Jesus used that word light, you know, in two different ways. Once, you know, he also said, I am the light of the world. But he also said, uh, you are the light of the world, that we are the light and that we have this ability to light up the world. So you mentioned that people, and I'd never heard this before, that people gave up something for Advent the way that they give up something for, for, for Lent. Do people still do that? And when did if not, when did that tradition stop? I think it's pretty rare. I mean, you know, the uh, but I I don't think we have to sort of work against our culture. I think we can use our culture so that when you hear those carols, a lot of times you know they have Advent messages in them. I mean, the one that's clearly Advent: "O come, O come, Emmanuel." You know, that's mm-hmm calling out the the coming of Christ. And even a, a secular carol like the 12 Days of Christmas, it still is about that countdown to what the what truly embodies the celebration. Yeah, well, you know, you, you mentioned that. It's actually the 12 Days of Christmas are start with Christmas and end ah, with right. the coming of the of the the wise men. Yes, the, uh, I called on, them when I was a little kid. I called them the wise guys. Actually, that's that's pretty good. I mean, you know, we we sing that song. You know, we three kings of Orient are. It's worth remembering in the Bible. They're not called kings, and there's not three of them. There's never a number. It just says the wise men. We we've given it a number because they have three gifts. Um, frankincense, uh-huh. myrrh, and you know, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we think, oh, what well, must have been three? But but we so these traditions evolve. There's lovely things in them. It's always good to sort of look back at the Bible. When I taught Sunday school, I used to always say, okay, now are there three wise men? Are they kings? Ah, you know, make the kids look. <laughs> Well, that triadic uh, symbol is is throughout Christianity too. The, the 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 spiritual the spiritual being divided into three separate things that are one at the same time. But there could have been a horde of wise men then, according to you. Yeah. The um. But the 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 other thing I like to honor, and this we actually do. You know, with we always set up a crash. Um, but uh-huh. we don't put Jesus in the crash yet because that doesn't happen till Christmas. And we right. often show the traveling. You know, think about the journey that that Mary and Joseph took to get down to Bethlehem. I mean, right. she's she's pregnant. I mean, she's not going to want to travel very fast. The um some people say, "Oh, that, you know, it's I think it's about 92 miles from Nazareth." To Bethlehem, but if you're just on a donkey, you're not going to do that in a day, right? I know. I've I've actually made that journey by bus, admittedly, but it it's not an easy journey even today with with roads. It's still arduous. So I can only imagine. You know, you always see Mary uh, kind of side saddle on a on a donkey with Joseph leading it, and it's it's sort of a comforting. I'm remembering a painting that has them, you know, like looking over Bethlehem as if, you know, that moment as they were about to descend into the Beth, into Bethlehem was, was just a, a moment when the world was going to change. And it, and it did. And I guess we forget sometimes that what we're really counting down to is not shopping days from Christmas, but the, the days that lead to the moment that changed the entire human race. And, you know, Edward, there's, and, a, there's a spiritual quality too in counting you know and and advent mm-hmm. is coming um it's you know like you wait for you know a good friend who's going to come you know or your your mm-hmm. grandparents are going to arrive or you know the, the i mean even this idea that santa's going to come down the chimney and and uh, and all that I, I feel that that is linked to this spiritual thing of waiting Mm-hmm. And 
it is it, waiting and and uh, and preparing. I mean, we know that that um, Lent is we we prepare ourselves for that, to, for the fulfillment of the redemptive promise that was made when Christ came into this world. You know, in the same way, I guess we're preparing ourselves for His birth, um, the way we would prepare for prepare for any other spiritually momentous time in our lives, and it's just it's it's sad sometimes that. Advent seems to have gotten so lost in the noise, but then again, there's a lot of people I think like you who who honor it in in the way you do. What are there certain things that you do during Advent that that, that are interesting? Well, I'm going to go back to that crash because we certainly did it with our kids. We would you know have the 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 wise men way in another room because they're they've got the right. longest way to travel. I mean, right. they're traveling all the way from from Persia, probably. I mean, that's our guess. Uh, so they've got, you know, months of traveling to get, you know, and, and we have always had a little camel. There was the camel and there was the, the wise men. So they're, they're making their journey. And then we have Mary and Joseph every day, you know, they're getting a little closer mm -hmm. and that baby doesn't go into the manger until Christmas Eve. I, you know, these are things that, that sort of, they're tangible ways of, of celebrating. Uh, you know, the, the, the shepherds are the ones who are closest to this event. And so you can put them out in the fields. Maybe they're right. on top of the sofa or maybe <laughs> on top of the TV. Uh, yeah. And then they come too. So it's this, there's lots of journeys happening. And there just is. think of that word. We use journey to talk about our spiritual journeys mm -hmm. to, to Christ. And you, you talk about the, 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 the length of time it takes um, people to travel to Bethlehem. But also, you know, I, I, I subscribe to some astronomy sites and magazines and things. And you look, you know, and, and they say, well, it takes X millions or hundreds of millions of years for light to, to, from a star to reach the Earth. And I thought, that's really amazing. Like, the, did the, the, the star of Bethlehem, how long did that light? take to reach us and did that star was that star born in the firmament um when the earth was created and it took all of those years for it to finally reach us and coincide with the birth of this this humble birth of a savior in bethlehem and oh, i like to think of it that had the longest journey at all that light that's a lovely idea i love that you know the the light because you know there's always in the crash we have that that light and when you think that the the wise men followed that light for so long, right? Um, you know that, that, that it's. Um, but once again, it links to that idea that Christ said, "I, you know, you are the light of the world, and He is a light illuminating us." Can you do? You, can, I've always been fascinated by the star, and it seems to to coincide with Advent. Um, what what tell me more about the star of bethlehem that i don't know well that's a good idea because you know we think okay the wise men didn't come until we now call epiphany which happens in uh, uh J january 6th january. uh but like you were saying edward that star had to be up for a long period for them to be able to make that huge journey um, you know, follow that star. And just that idea, follow the star, isn't that a wonderful metaphor for what we do and in, in spiritually? You know, I, I mean, when I'm praying, I, I also like to visualize, you know, a light and, and, and mm -hmm. to follow that star is to just follow that light. You're, you're, I know that you happen to be in California right now looking after your, your newly born grandkids. Um, but and you're from California, but you spent most of your life in New York City, um, in Manhattan particularly, which is a you know Christmas central in many ways, both commercially, but also spiritually. I mean, people seem to forget sometimes that there's a church on almost every corner in Manhattan. Um, tell me a little bit about Christmas in New York and, and what you will always keep in your heart about it. Well, you know, actually, that's a good um, good reminder of you know. That star, because the on our corner they you know they put stars up you know hanging from uh, over, over the street, and you know I'd always think, oh gosh, that's you know wait, Halloween is just over and those stars are going up. What is that? Uh, but think about it. 
that star would have probably been in the sky if the wise men were traveling right. from that far. From so it's not insane. The, um, <laughs> no, it's not insane. Um, well, listen, this has been a great discussion uh, with you about Advent. Um, do you have any final thoughts you can leave us with? I just, you know, we often talk about, you know, keeping Christ in Christmas. And I think observing Advent is a way to do that. Uh -huh. We, um, in, my, in our church, we sing a, a service of lessons and carols. And it's certainly before Christmas. But it's anticipating, looking forward to this coming. So okay. do that with yourself, you know. Do not you. I mean, you just do it anyway. But, you know, out there, go ahead. You can celebrate Christmas by by thinking of this coming that's happening. Right. And so and as you say, and to borrow a, a catchphrase, just do it when it comes to Advent. <laughs>